What's up YouTube and welcome to another Infinite Painter tutorial where today I'm going to show you how to create this design you can see on screen now. Now before we get started you're going to need to check out the requirements section of the description down below to grab the palette, canvas size, the additional brushes uh, for today's design and the graphic here of the deer. There's multiple ways to do exactly the same thing so just find one that you're comfortable with. There's helpful videos in the description to guide you through that process and make sure that once you've got everything you sit back and relax and enjoy the tutorial. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, drop a like down below, and with all that said, let's get started. So to get started, you'll need to create your canvas, and I've just made mine 2000 by 2000, and you can see the rest of my settings there. And if we hit create, once we're into our canvas, we're gonna to need to go ahead and grab the palette. So if we go down to our palette options here, and you hit on this icon here, you'll be able to find palette 19. Now, of course, you'll have either added it manually or you'll have downloaded it. Either way, it doesn't really matter as long as you find the palette for today's design. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna grab our initial color, which is gonna be the second color on that top row. So the second color in the palette, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to our brush. We're gonna make sure we are using under the option of fills, we're gonna use the solid fill brush. We're then gonna go ahead and go up to our tools. We're gonna to go to the option of rectangle under shapes. And once we've got that selected on this layer, we're gonna create a rectangle in the middle of our screen. This is gonna be your entire sort of canvas area that we can work with. So I'm gonna drop mine roughly here and you can just move it into position if needs be. So I can just go back, I've tapped away so I can just grab my cursor here. And I can just move that till it sits pretty bang on in the center of our canvas, if not slightly higher. And then hit the tick when you're done. Let's then go ahead and adjust this. So we're gonna to go to our tools. We're gonna to turn off the rectangle, we're done with that. We're gonna to go to our eraser and we're gonna tap on the eraser and under calligraphy, we're gonna use the monoline brush. The size doesn't really matter, but mine is set to 48. And all we're gonna do is just rough up the sides here, making it less of a rectangle, perfect rectangle. We want it to have that lovely handcrafted look to it. So you can just wiggle your pen in and out. You don't have to sort of make it too uh, wobbly though but just try and sort of make sure it doesn't sort of be, you know, too much of a consistent wave. You want it to be a nice and sort of random across there. I'm just gonna go ahead and just chop into here just a little bit across the top there. And we'll do the same down this end as well. So we'll just go ahead and just chop into here. You can see at the top there, I left that a little bit more exposed, that's fine. And at the bottom, we'll just go ahead and make a very slight sort of wavy wobbly line along here, that's it. Nothing too crazy. We want that, again, handcrafted look to it. We're gonna go ahead then and create a new layer. We'll tap on that layer and we will clipping mask it. So we'll tap on it and use the clip. I'll bring my layers out there so you can see. I'll swipe that back. We're then gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here. It is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. It is the seventh color in the palette. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our brush. We're gonna use the option of fills and solid fill again. And if I go to my settings, You'll be able to see the smoothness setting there set to about 33. Feel free to change that if you wish. And we're going to get started with a bit of land that our trees and our deer is going to stand on. So I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to create like a bit of a wobbly line that just starts to sort of tear up on the side and then go all the way around under here. And that's pretty much bang on, to be honest. You want that little bit of a slope, and then this is where our trees are going to sit. We're going to create another new layer, and we're going to drag it underneath the one we just worked on. So it just sits underneath there. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna make our way backwards. So we're gonna grab this color here just beside it. So just to the left. And then we're gonna continue with the exact same brush. We're just gonna create a hillside here that has like a little bit of a sort of drop off into the sort of valley over here. And then again, go round just to fill in your shape. Tap on your background shape, create another new layer. Go to your colors, switch it to the next one in the palette, which is the fifth one on the top row. And we're gonna create a bit more of a vertical hillside now. So I've come in from the side there, where I'm currently drawing, and I'm gonna sort of create a little bit of a hilltop and then go all the way around again. And at any stage, you can always go back and adjust some of your shapes. Maybe I can just go ahead and just maybe let that one just run in behind there a little bit nicer. I'll tap on my base shape again. I'll create another new layer. Go to my colors. Let's grab the next one along, the one just beside it, the fourth color on the top row. We're gonna create another hilltop on the left that's gonna be just a smidge higher than this one, just a tiny, tiny bit. So create like a little bit of a peak on it. And then you want it to sort of, again, run down into like a bit of a valley down here and go all the way around. So if you accidentally let go, like I did, just draw again and go all the way around. 
to your starting point. So you end up with a little something like this. And again, we can always go back in and adjust it. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on my eraser, still using the monoline brush, and I'm just gonna adjust this shape a little bit more. I want it to have a bit more of like a swoop down in towards a little bit of a valley down here. We're gonna add trees to this anyway. So the actual shape itself is gonna change a little bit later. It's just sort of the, the overall silhouette. I just wanna change a tiny, tiny bit. Then we're gonna go again, tap on our base shape. We'll change back to our brush just before we forget. We'll create another new layer and we're gonna to go to our colors, grab the one just beside it. So the third color on that top row. And this is your final sort of layer here. And I'm gonna start over here on the left-hand side, draw across the screen, create a little bit of a wobble, let that run in behind there and then maybe it goes back up again. And as long as you sort of fill in this area down here, you're good to go. And with that, we've got all the basic shapes we need then. We can tap on our base shape again, create another new layer, and we can add in our sun and clouds. And then I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna grab the first color in the palette, it's just slightly off white. I'm then gonna go up to my tools. I'm gonna to go to the option of circle. And we're gonna draw in a circle here, just for our sun, or you know, something like this. And then just position that in the center. We just want it to peek over the top there. And it's totally up to you. You can tap on your circle when you're done and you can go in with the eraser and maybe sort of wobble it up a little bit more. So for example, we can do a sort of you know, just take away that perfectly round shape and we can let it fit in with the rest of the aesthetic a bit more. So a couple of wobbles just along there. Keep the majority of its shape. Try not to distort it too much. And then on the same layer, we're gonna go ahead and create some clouds. So we're gonna to go to our colors though, and we're gonna drag it all the way into the top left. And you'll know you're there. If you go to your settings, you want six Fs in a row. And then we're gonna go ahead and create some clouds. Now they're gonna be really simple. You're just gonna create some lovely wobbles, lovely, lovely wobbles and then let that run out into a point and then come back on yourself and create some very simple shapes. Just a little something like this. We'll create some very, very simple wobbles down here, a little bit of a smaller one. And then you can sort of go back on yourself as well, create this sort of extra little tier there. I only recommend you add maybe two, but if you do feel like you wanna add in another one, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna sort of come in again from just underneath this and just introduce a little bit more cloud. I think that looks really cool. Then let's go ahead now and start to adjust some of these layers. So we want this layer here. You can see it flash when I tap on it. I'll turn it on and off just to be sure for you. And we're gonna to need to change our color. So we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here, the third color on that top row. And the brush, you're gonna need the tree set brush set that I've provided a link to in the description down below. So the tree set here, and we're gonna use the option here of tree two. Now the size, we want it very, very small in the distance. So currently it looks like it's very, very large. So we're sat to about a 10 at this point and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm sat down to about 11 or 10 point, either one's fine. And on the same layer, just simply just drag your pen along here, create like a little bit of a forest in the distance. You don't always have to do the whole layer. You don't have to fill in the entirety of it. You know, I can fill in this area over here and let that sort of run in behind there a little bit more. But you can see there, I'll just like leave a little bit of a gap where on the top of the hill, maybe it's just blank for whatever reason. And over here on the left, we can just leave that or maybe even introduce like a few in the corner here because in front of the white, it does look quite good. So a little bit here and then just let that run into again, a flat area. Then we'll move up a layer to this one here on the left. We will go ahead and change our color to it. So this one here, the fourth color and your brush wants to then get a little bit bigger again. So we'll go up to maybe, let's try a 22 point here. So 22 pixels, and we'll create another little bit of forest. And again, you can pick and choose where you want it to go. You know, maybe as it makes its way down into the sort of valley over here is where sort of the forest then continues and this steep climb might be a cliff. As long as you can create a story, I always say, you can always sort of justify it and you can do whatever you like anyway, it's your design. You want to do something that looks completely different to me you're more than welcome to i encourage you to always try and just be a little bit creative here and there try something with your own imagination if you can so we've got lots of trees up there that looks looking awesome let's then move to the next layer in front so we'll go to this one here we'll go to the color for it so the fifth color on that top row we'll increase the brush size again and we've gone up by 10 so far but i'm going to jump all the way to the option of maybe around about sort of 43 that looks pretty good. I want something nice and large over here. 
uh, on this hilltop and we just want to make sure our canvas is nice and straight so our trees will be as well and we can just let them just run down the cliff's edge and again you can just pick and choose where you want it to be press with a good amount of pressure and a good amount of drag so you get a solid tree and just in case you have got a few trees that are a little bit sort of opaque just duplicate the layer and merge them together and then that should get rid of it I might introduce like a few more down here but ultimately we'll just leave sort of the top area with the majority of trees so I'm just going to let that sort of funnel out maybe a tiny one there lovely stuff let's then move to the next layer in front so this one just here again we're going to go ahead and change the color to it so this one here the sixth color in the palette we're going to go to our uh, brush size again and we're going to increase it up to around about maybe sort of 64 points if it lets me let's go up to around about that 64 and we'll create some trees on here too so creating some lovely big forest area lovely stuff and we can just drag that along here and don't worry too much in this area this is going to get sort of cropped off in a minute anyway by the large main focal points but just a few in there will look great and just let that sort of run down here then let's go ahead and start to work on those main focal points so i've tapped on the top layer here but i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to tap on it and make sure it's not clipped we're going to go to the color here so this one here it is the seventh color you can always see the hexadecimal code there if you need to match up yourself we're going to go to the brush collection and we're going to use this one here tree number three and the size is currently set to 650 or 76 should i say and if i tap you can see the scale of it there so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to grab that layer so i'm going to go to my edit options and go to basic transformation once i've tapped on the screen and i'm just going to position it so that it falls outside of our frame here it looks really cool because it looks like it's escaping and then what we can do is we can hit the tick we can tap on the layer and duplicate it the one above if we go back up to our create options we go to edit and basic transformation but we flip it horizontally we can then have a mirroring tree we can maybe scale this one up in size a little bit more just to sort of make it a little bit different and we want three here in total so i'm going to go for something like this and i'm going to leave a little bit of a gap because i might just draw that in manually in a moment and i'm going to move that across just to get them really tight to each other hit the tick and then the first one i made i'm going to tap on that and duplicate that go to my create options and edit basic transformation and i'm going to scale that down in size move that just beside so we've got three trees all with a similar aesthetic to one another and hit the tick when you're done and it doesn't matter which layer you're on but if you tap on the top one first of all and we merge it down we tap on the next one and merge it down we can then go to our brush change it to calligraphy and we'll go to the monoline brush size doesn't really matter as long as you can maybe sort of draw in a bit of a column here in the middle where it just maybe attaches this one to the ground a bit more then we're going to need to add in our focal point of our deer and to do that you just need to go ahead and download the image i provided in the description down below we're going to go up to our create options or in fact we're going to go up to the three dots should i say we're going to go to our normal options we're going to go to import and we're going to go to our photos now we're going to go ahead and grab this deer image i've provided once you tap on that you're going to get the option here do you want to import it as a layer or a reference and we want to tap on layer and once you've dropped it we're going to flip it horizontally using this icon here we're going to scale it down in size and you can position it wherever you like you can make it nice and big you can make it somewhat smaller it doesn't matter if the legs are hidden by it as long as you get the sort of front legs i think it looks really cool and i think that looks pretty good for scale you know i think that makes it look like it's a little bit closer to us so i'm going to hit the tick when i'm done we've got our main focal point and now we need to add the extra layers here that are going to sit outside of our frame so if we again create another new layer we're going to go ahead and go to our brush now i like to use the monoline brush and i know a lot of people also like to use the fills brush do whichever one you like both will work fine but i prefer the monoline and if i actually go to my settings for it i'm going to bring the smoothness down i want to have a few jitters in there so i've got it down to about sort of 45 there and with my brush it doesn't matter what the size is we can keep it nice and small what sort of size is that that looks pretty good so we're at a about a sort of uh, let's go up to about 20 or there enough our color wants to change to this color here the next dark tone so it's actually the eighth color in the palette the third one on the bottom row and we're going to introduce our sort of larger big stone here now we're imagining that there is somewhat of a crop here so i'm just going to make it a little bit wider than the image i'm just going to sort of draw down make a sort of a straight line that just comes down to here and then from this point 
I'm going to go ahead and just create like a rock that comes in, goes up to around about here. And then as we make our way all the way up towards the top, we'll link them together. If you use the fill, it will already be filled. But if we use the monoline like I have, just go to your create options, you go to fill and tap in there. You may get this very small pixelated white line. All you need to do is increase the amount of strength of the fill. So if I tap and drag to the right, it just disappears eventually. So you wanna just find where it just about disappears. There's the same method, the same ways of doing the same thing. There's multiple ways, should I say, of doing the same thing. Then we're gonna go ahead and create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab the next dark tone here. And this is gonna be our final set of sort of details down here. So we're gonna create uh, another small little rock down here, just again, outside of the frame. Just a little kind of rock. I'm not going to fill it until I've finished this space. So there's one. I'll do another one down here. Another sort of little rock on the ground. Link that up. And then I'm going to reduce the brush size down to maybe something around about five. I'm going to get in here now and create some very, very small little rocks. Now, as always, just make sure at any point, just throughout your design, just go up to your options and hit save. We know what Infinite Painter can be like, so just make sure you do that just in case you get a little crash here and there. So I'm just trying to create a small little rock there. I'll create a lovely little small one in here too. Like little pebbles on the ground almost. And we'll create another little rock over here too. And another one just in front of it. Maybe a bit more of an angular one. And then we'll go up to our options. We'll go to fill and we'll go ahead and tap and drag in all the shapes that we need to to fill them in. Tap and drag to fill them in. Again, if you use the fill tool, they're exactly the same way of doing the same thing. So let's just keep a drag in in here until we fill them in. At the end of the day, you can get in there and fill them in manually as well, if you like. So you should have a few rocks like this and then hit the tick when you're done. On the same layer, we're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna back out of this one and we're gonna use the soft taper brush here. The size is gonna be set to 21. And we're going to use this to create some lovely little blades of grass. So just down here, for example, this will help sort of this edge of the frame sort of blend in a little bit. We're just going to create some little blades of grass all from maybe one point like this. Just lovely different sort of variations in your pressure. If you don't have pressure sensitivity, just keep giving it a few goes or maybe even use your eraser just to trim it down a little bit. So a few blades of grass there. You can even introduce like a few just down here if you like. Don't go too mad with it. It's meant to be nice and minimalistic. And then we'll do the same over here as well, but like a little bit sort of further down. So just a few more blades of grass down here, a little bit sort of closer towards us. Just lovely little sort of mini details here in there. Just help sort of bring that final little look together. A couple down here, nice and small. Now the beautiful thing with Infinite Painter is this built in textures. And if we go to this option here, we then have our setup for the texture. And if we actually turn this on, the whole design there gets this fantastic canvas texture. So it looks like we've painted it onto a canvas and you can see some of my settings there, but you can tap on this graphic here and you can change it to whatever you like. I believe it's this one here is the one we've used, but feel free to change it to maybe stone or wood, whatever you prefer the look of. I like that one as it is. And maybe we could just adjust some of these settings just to tone this down a little bit, maybe 70 on the depth. The scale is good, but maybe the opacity can just come down just a little bit, maybe down to about sort of 21. And if we go ahead and we zoom in a little bit and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please be sure to tag me in your creations over on Instagram or anywhere where you share your work. Make sure to drop a like down below and a comment if you enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe for more content. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.